Good evening. We're going to call this meeting to order the Canada Recreation and Park District. Uh, if we could have bike salutes. Um, Mr. Friedel. Sure. Please rise. Place your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And if we could have the roll call, please. Direct, yes. Director Lang. Here. Director Nis Cussworth. Here. Director Nichols. Yes. Director Buss. Here. Thank you very much. And do we have any members of the public wishing to speak? No, nobody online. All right. Thank you very much. In that case, we are going to adjourn to executive closed session. And Mr. Friedel, are you supposed to Read something off on this. Yeah, might I borrow your agenda, Chair? <laughs> Sir. Huffer, I apologize. Yes, we have the need for an executive closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9, D1 and 54956.9D2, conference with legal counsel regarding claim, claims and liability and, ex and ex significant exposure to litigation. Our district counsel will be George Ordonez. And there's four outstanding cases listed on the agenda. No announcement is expected. Thank you very much. We will return at six o'clock for the regular meeting. Welcome everyone. I'll do that take two. Um, can't imagine why there's such a large crowd here tonight. This is really fun. Anyway, um, I was going to have the youngest member of our audience lead us in the pledge, but um, <laughs> maybe maybe Grandma could do that instead. Shelly, could you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have the roll call, please. Director Huffer. Yes. Director Lang. Here. Director Cussworth. Here. Director Nichols. Yes. Director Buss. Here. Thank you very much. I don't know about the rest of the board. This is one of my favorite evenings of the entire year. We get to recognize some of our long-term employees. So with that, who am I turning this over to first? Mr. Friedel? Sure, I'll start. Um, and I think then we're going to go right to Andrew. Are you kicking it off? Um, but before we start, I, I kind of want to let the board know and staff that um, we didn't forget about you, but I think we got a little behind because of COVID and meeting restrictions. We did do Zoomies one year where we did them all on Zoom. I don't know if anyone tuned in for those, but... Um, we have 11 folks tonight, and then we'll be doing, I don't know, something like 10 more in November as well. So we're kind of playing a little catch up, which is which is cool. So some people in here may be almost 10 months beyond what you see on the page here. So to those folks we didn't get to in the last 10 months, our apologies, but it'll be a fun night. So with that, Andrew. All right, thank you. Um, we actually have a scratch. So we, we will um, be skipping Jesse Barone. Um, he is having, or his family is having his fourth child. So we were notified today that he's he's out and won't be won't be joining us because they got more important stuff to do. Um, so we are gonna start with uh, Michael McGurk and he's joining us via Zoom. So if Cameron can get him set up with us. Can you hear us okay, Mike? Yes. All right. So um, Mike is our open space technician. He's been with the district for five years. Uh, he's actually local. So born and raised Newbury Park, uh, Newbury Park Panther, uh, Banyan Bobcat. Um, he actually went to preschool at Borchard Community um, Center. Uh, so attended there, did programs growing up, including pony baseball, uh, karate, um, his family did a bunch of programming with the district. Um, he currently lives in Newbury Park. Um, him and his wife, Sarah, of seven years, um, have a daughter, Everly, who's three years old. 
Um, so pretty proud dad, pretty proud husband, um, and really enjoys working working for the district, being being a local uh, native of the area. So as far as his role with the district, he performs a variety of open space tasks and maintenance functions for us, upkeep of restrooms, trash collection, debris out in open space, trail construction and maintenance, um, as well as graffiti removal throughout open space. So Mike is typically the and regularly the first eyes on issues that we see out in open space just because of his role and, and um, working through open space properties and coordinating with staff and the ranger team as well as others. Um, and so he communicates with the public regularly um, out in open space and on the trails. Um, personally, Mike is an avid backpacker, so he enjoys um, hiking throughout California. Um, he has done Utah area as well as Arizona. Um, he spent a lot of time in Los Padres National Forest, um, and Mike actually provided his top Costco trails for us. So he kind of gave a little bit of variety of depending on what he's what he's doing with his family or or by himself um, for biking. He says Western Plateau um, is where he likes to be. Um, hiking with his daughter is Wildwood. She loves the ducks, so I really enjoys enjoys the ducks out there. Um, and just overall, his favorite trail is Sunset Hills Trail. Um, but he also enjoys the range of wildflowers all through open space. Um, so Mike is a great member of Costco, and he takes pride in the community that he serves. So thank you, Mike, for your five years of service. Thank you. So Mike, if you want to go ahead and say some words, and then we can turn it. Are we doing individual comments from the board? Not, not at, now. At the end. At the yeah. end. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's been a great joy just working in the community that I grew up in and giving back and then being able to work and, you know, my passion. And I've always been a user of the open space, even before it was Costco's open space. So it's always up in the hills. And now I get to walk those same areas and, you know, everything is kind of a, a touchstone to old memories. And I love sharing that with my coworkers and my community and you know, my family now too. Jim? Cool. Thank you, Mike. And uh, appreciate it. You're welcome to stay on and watch the rest of this, but um, I think we're going to slide right into whoever's next. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Are you, are you going to take a picture with the screen or no? <laughs> Shelly's ready. Shelly wanted to take a picture. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> and, and then actually jesse has joined us so uh Je jesse go up and, and stand at the podium oh <laughs> so, so thanks thanks for coming out um so J jesse is our our weekend custodian uh he's worked he's worked with us yeah <laughs> Where's the baby? No, you guys are distracted. <laughs> the baby hasn't been born. No, she's been in labor since Monday. Oh. And uh, right now she's on a morphine rest. So I was like, okay, she's at Woodland Hills. I was like, I think I'll make it actually. <laughs> All right, real quick then. <laughs> so uh, Jesse's our weekend custodian. He's been with us for five years. He's a proud father of of three uh, ranges of ages uh, nine, four, and fifteen months, and any minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, main goal in life is is to be able to provide for his family and protect and be a good example for his children. Um, his his children have enjoyed CRPD programming um, over the years. His youngest actually already learned how to swim and has been playing basketball uh, in our programs. Uh, professionally, background for Jesse came he came from the school district. Um, in a similar role with the school district. Um, he performs a variety of custodial tasks um, that cleaning and disinfecting the park restrooms, um, minor plumbing maintenance, as well as graffiti removal. Um, Jesse takes great pride in the work that he does for the community, um, trying to make them clean and safe for the public to use. And he really treats, treats our park facilities like they are his own. So um, he, takes, he takes a lot of pride in the work he does. Um, from a personal side, uh, he enjoys a lot um, with his kids, uh, including sharing the parks, um, playgrounds and programs and all the fun stuff that we we offer here. But he also is kind of a foodie. He, he likes to eat out a bit and try different stuff, but he also likes to cook himself. 
um, and try different things at home. Enjoys traveling, mountain biking and hiking, um, as well as movies and classic cars. Um, and then he's also a huge fan of the Redwoods up the coast. Um, so Jesse's a great member of the CRPD team and takes extreme pride in what he does for us in the community. Uh, thank you, Jesse, for your five years of service. Thank you. Sorry, my mind's everywhere right now. Um, yeah, it's been nice working at for the parks. Uh, I really love it. I came from the school district. Um, I uh, had my first daughter when I was 19, so I started, I needed like benefits and like everything. So um, I started at a school district down in uh, Ventura School District, and then I went to Ocean View, then I jumped to CVUSD, because I wanted them to go to like the best schools possible. So uh, my daughter, she went to Westlake Elementary, because I worked there, not just because it was Westlake, and uh, the principal was good and everything, but um, <clears throat> Sorry. I like was driving over here crazy. Uh, um, yeah, she's in like a, a magnet school right now. I'm trying my best. So I've been uh, really focused on all of them. And I think this is my last kid. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I love it here, though. Uh, everyone's cool. And I like how everyone's kind of like real family oriented compared to a lot of other places I've worked. And um uh, I, I see myself here for a while, a long haul. Yeah. Right. So, awesome. yeah. 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 Mr. Chair, can I say a few words while he's, while he's still there? Jesse, if I, just before you go, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I bumped into you over at the Crowley house some time ago. I remember right, you the part yeah, as a tire man, and, and here I am, he's just, you know, diligently doing his work, you know, the Crowley House restroom is a little bit of a challenge for a number of reasons, and the guy's just blasting through the place, no, nobody's business, and just a <laughs> smile on his face, I get struck up a conversation, I just was so impressed with your work ethic, and I know that is not an easy job, and the, probably the most difficult place of all of them, and to you, I mean, you were just, you're just a little bright a <laughs> ray of sunshine out there so thank you for yeah. doing what you do you make the park district look the way it does so thank you thank you i remember i was able to show you like this one's dirty this one's good <laughs> all right i think i am next so tim smith you want to step up to the podium please <laughs> So Tim is celebrating five years with us, and Tim received his degree in history. It's perfect for recreation, right? Mm -hmm. um, from Channel Islands. And um, Tim didn't really have a clue that recreation was going to be his career. He was an aspiring teacher, but once he got his first taste of the field, he was hooked. So I hear. He was hired in 2016 to be a recreation leader at Thousand Oaks Community Center, he taught a variety of recreation classes and quickly became a requested instructor by parents, was promoted to senior recreation leader, and worked on school campuses developing recess programs that introduced kids to new games and kept them out of trouble during free periods. Then he got promoted again to take on the recreation specialist position at Borchard Community Center. One of his favorite assignments was overseeing the Teen Leadership Volunteer Club. He had approximately 50 kids during the summer come through the program and enjoyed seeing them grow. 2019, Thousand Oaks Community Center stole him back, where he was hired as a full-time recreation coordinator. Over the last five years, Tim has been instrumental in reimagining the center's large special events in order to make them possible during COVID. From transitioning to a touch-a-truck parade, a Halloween drive through an egging people's yard, he brought opportunities for the community to still have fun. He says his biggest accomplishment has been getting a full-time position and getting to do something he loves, bringing smiles to the community. He's very comfortable being up on the CRPD stage and is the host of the annual con costume contest at Haunted Trail event. He's been married to his incredible wife, Ari, for three years now. They didn't meet working at CRPD, but she spent a summer working with the TR unit. 
When not at work, Tim enjoys playing board games, hanging out with his friends, and shooting hoops. Thank you very much for your five years of service. Thank you, Rochelle, and, and everybody here for putting up some embarrassing pictures of me. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it. I, I didn't know I wanted to do this. And shortly after I started, I, I fell in love with it, working with the community and being able to give back and interacting with families and people at events is, you know, where my heart is. So I look forward to um, continuing and adding a lot more years to this uh, five years. So I just want to thank the board and everybody here. There's been a lot of people who've been a part of my success. So I, you know, you probably know who you are, but thank you very much. There's too many names to name. So. Okay. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. That's a good sign. <laughs> Devin, you're up. Can you move it down? So Devin has asked that um, we speak for a really, really long time. No, she actually, uh, I heard she she said she'd been here for a long time. She's awesome. We're done. Thank you so much, Devin, for your years. <laughs> Anyhow, unfortunately, Devin has a supervisor that wrote three pages worth. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, Devin has, uh, is awesome and her manager has written a ton. Devin is celebrating 15 years of service with the district tonight and the impact that she has on the therapeutic recreation community over that time has been enormous. She grew up locally in Agora Hills. She went to Agora High. She got her bachelor's in recreation therapy at CSUN. She did an internship at, uh, in the TR program. She got her master's in human behavior and psychology. She thought she was going to be a, um, a human behavior psychologist, a social worker, and um, but she changed her career path after uh, going to a being introdu introduced to recreation therapy at the career fair. So Devin began her CRPD career in 2004 as a camp counselor for the therapeutic unit while also working as a recreation therapist for Casa Pacifica, a residential treatment center and emergency foster care for youth. In 2015, Devin was hired full-time as a recreation coordinator and promoted to recreation supervisor in 2019. Throughout her time in all positions, she has served with CRPD. She is most proud of relationships she has built with the families and participants of her program. Devin knows and cares deeply about the people she serves and the bonds she has formed with participants and the staff members, providing a family atmosphere and experience for all involved with the therapeutic unit. She has a huge heart and is an absolute workhorse. It is almost as if she has the ability to be in three places at one time. Her ability to connect with others and earn trust and credibility has helped her succeed as a supervisor, especially during the pandemic. Devin and her team really stepped up to provide life-changing learning and a socialization programs to individuals with special needs as most other programs completely shut down, filling a huge need for several families. In addition to running the Therapeutic Recreation Unit, Devin also leads the Inclusion Department, working with families to provide accommodations to ensure individuals can be successful in any CRPD class or program. Always looking for new ways to serve her community Devin has worked with the Tri-Counties Regional Center to establish CRPD as a vendor, providing more affordable access to programs and classes for any individual registered with the Tri-Counties Regional Center. She has, done, she has dozens of favorite memories, but her most cherished ones are from camping trips at Shaver Lake. I guess some kids really early in the morning shake the tent and yell, um, earthquake. And in her free time, she loves scorekeeping with her kiddos, baseball games, and attending their theater productions and other sporting events. Devin is a dedicated, hardworking public servant with a gigantic heart who is fueled by the drive to serve the therapeutic recreation community. Thank you so much for your 15 years and congratulations. So thank you for capturing the worst photos of me <laughs> up there. But also um, it was actually really cool to see how much um, just over the years I've 
grown um, all my years just through Caneo Recreation and Park District. Um, it's, you know, this week I had a lot to reflect. I had the opportunity to go to the um, CPRS conference in San Diego. And they, a lot of times they ask you, what is your why? Um, why are you doing this? Why are you in this profession? And um, and then hand in hand today, we did our professional growth meeting today. And, and we talked a lot about leadership. And, um, you know, from the get go, I never thought I could ever be a supervisor because Cecilia was so amazing that I never thought I could fill her shoes and, um, or as good as her, but, um, you know, Canoe Recreation Park District, you guys gave me so many tools and I was able to finally be able to use those tools and be a great leader and bring our community together. And I just, my why is this family and this community and thank you so much for everything. <laughs> well, uh, Shelly, you get to stay up there. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's Shelly's turn. You, you get to leave. Oh, good. You get to leave. <laughs> Shelly gets to stay up there. She's trying to sneak away. She also tried to make me keep it short. So we'll, we'll see how I do. Um, so Shelly, she joined CRPD in 2007, which is the same year I joined MRCA. So by the time I came to CRPD three years ago, I'd already benefited from her high work, like her hard work and um, her high standard of work. She provides both um, excellent HR resources to CRPD and MRCA. And I was delighted to know when I was coming here that I'd have such a terrific HR resource when I came. With a business degree, U.S. Air Force Reserve Service and over 30 years as a human resources professional, Shelly is an invaluable resource to the district. She is the professional and compassionate manager of human resource operations, including all the administration, recruitment, benefits, union relations, as well as the health and safety of our CRPD staff. She is also a critical resource for MRCA Human Resources, who frequently rely on her expertise and experience. Just yesterday, she met with MRCA's fire division to review the complicated staff structure she created for them that combined MRCA uh, existing infrastructure and the fire related experience levels required by the state. This is just an example of the dedication and attention to detail that Shelley brings to her work. She has spent the last 15 years developing productive relationships with all employees. She is a knowledgeable resource available to all staff for any issue, big or small. She knows when and how to keep things confidential and her open door policy is frequently used, which shows how effective she is. Without the trust and confidence she has built with staff, the district would struggle to recruit and retain the high level of staff that we have. Also, while every public agency is different, Shelley works very hard to stay abreast of the most recent legal requirements and the best practice recommendations for public agencies to ensure the district is not only compliant, but exemplary. Additionally, Shelley has the task of explaining very complicated things to everyone. So for example, explaining a 457B retirement account that is a substitute for social security, <laughs> none of us would understand it without Shelley. <laughs> In July of 2020, CRPD recognized Shelley for her outstanding work, giving her the unofficial title of CRPD mom. Mm -hmm. She became the go-to expert for the various orders related to the pandemic and guided the development of policies and procedures to keep staff and the public safe. And before I wrapped up, because she's telling me to keep it short, and then she can introduce her beautiful family, <laughs> um, I have some comments from colleagues that I've gathered. So, Shelly is always so kind and helpful, even at a moment's notice. She is always so cheerful and helpful. She's professional, reliable, and great to work with. She enjoys her job and ensures CRPD values are met. Shelly has been a crucial part to my growth here at CRPD. She always takes the time to teach me the vital parts of my role and is patient as I learn. And I'll end with this. When I asked them all, all around, how to describe her in one word, I got mom, I got unflappable, helpful, but the most common was respectful, which I think is just perfect for you. So thank you, Shelly, for being the respectful, helpful, and unflappable <laughs> CRPD mom to all of us for the last 15 years. Thank you. Um, this truly has been, my, you know, my daytime family, you know, for 15 years. So thank you to the board and Melissa and Jim and 
Andrew and Aline and, and everyone, all the employees, I appreciate so much what everybody does, and that's why we're here. Um, so it has truly been a joy to be here. And tonight with me is e my husband, Enos, and my son and daughter-in-law, Kevin and Chandler, and baby Jovi. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son, Blake, might be on uh, Zoom, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, is he on? Yeah, he is, he is on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark. Woo so Mark also joined CRPD when I joined MRCA, which meant I was already aware of his outstanding reputation when I came to CRPD, and he did not disappoint me. He is the reliable and professional manager of all things IT, computers, phones, apps, equipment, and staff. All these are critical to ensure the day-to-day -day function of district operations as well as support to the board. Managing IT infrastructure at the various district locations is quite a challenge, and that means planning and strategizing for equipment replacement before things age out, managing associated budgets, ensuring any needed updates are done, coordinating with vendors, and of course, managing staff that can replace, repair, and troubleshoot for all of these wonderful things across the district, in addition to the typical requests from assistance from various CRPD staff that are tech-challenged. Um, he works tremendously hard to ensure staff feel supported, equipment is maintained and secure, and that the budget allows the district to remain current with the newest IT resources available and is always preparing for the next big change. Just this morning, he was on a call with the state to discuss potential domain changes that may be necessary due to pending legislation and was already providing guidance and, ad and advice to address that potential scenario. He supervises staff that get scattered all throughout the district to ad address the many responsibilities that IT has grown to take over, especially since the pandemic. The flexibility, flexibility needed to manage staff and resources in such a scattered, fluctuating, and sometimes remote environment is essential to the district's day-to-day -day operations. And for all of you who have sworn at your computer or phone or when <laughs> Siri did something wrong, um, you... Or, or when you just push the wrong button, you will understand the type of calls that Mark gets daily. People get mad when stuff doesn't work. And even when it's not Mark's fault, maybe it's a power outage or someone clicked a spam link, it turns out it's going to be Mark's problem that he gets to deal with. Being able to help people through those difficult situations without judgment or criticism while maintaining a thick skin himself is impressive. In July of 2021, Mark was recognized by the district for the skill and patience he brought to the variety of workplace challenges that came with the pandemic. His quick action and attention to detail allowed the district to maintain a high level of service to the public, even when working remotely. Simultaneously, he somehow managed to allow board meetings to, tra to transition to remote seemingly overnight. Most recently, Mark has made tremendous improvements to, C to CRPD's IT security, the ever-facing uh, the ever-changing face of technology and the threats that come with it can be overwhelming, but Mark is ever-adjusting and adapting to keep staff educated, supported, and connected. And before I wrap up again, because you told me to be short, I also have comments from colleagues, including an email I literally got three hours ago that I did not ask for. So it, these are the types of emails I get. I was wanting to mention how kind and generous the IT team at CRPD has been to me, in particular, Mark. Who do I send my comic card to? LOL. I'm sure it's no big deal to them, but they've really made these hybrid meetings possible for MRCA. It should be known to everyone. So legit, didn't ask for it. That's the type of stuff I get. So the other comments I got from your colleagues were Mark is awesome and is always cultivating the best IT team. He is professional, reliable, and great to work with. I just want to thank Mark his, and his staff for doing an amazing job when we got shut down for COVID. They were able to get us all set up to work from home so quickly, and they made the transition so smooth for us. I would like to thank Mark and his staff for responding to us so quickly when we're having computer issues. They always do their best and get us up running ASAP. And then finally, I, had, I would like to say a big thank you to Mark for always providing helpful guidance and support when troubleshooting issues and for being a kind and patient mentor. Congratulations, it's well-earned. Here's to another 15 years, and I'll end with this. So I asked around to say, how would you describe Mark in one word? I got a combination, and feel free to expand on any of these. I got Star Wars, Legos, light displays, reliable, 
And the most common was troubleshooter. So Mark, thank you for being the CRPD troubleshooter and reliable resource for all things Star Wars, Legos, and light displays for the last 15 years. That's nice. <laughs> That's good. Oh, thank you. Um, Chair Huffer, members of the board, I just want to thank you all for your leadership and support all these years. Um, it's just I'm very grateful. Um, Jim, Melissa, Rochelle, Andrew, thank you for your mentorship and for listening to my often elaborate and sometimes outlandish ideas, but always listening with an open mind and, and hearing what, you know, recommendations and things that I'm making. And also, I just want to recognize quickly my boys, James, Luke, and Stephen. Um, I'm really proud of you and proud to be your father. Each of you has unique gifts, and I can't wait to see you guys grow up and to find young gentlemen and see what you do with your careers. My wife, Leah, thank you for your love and support and for the pushes that I often need to do things and to do, reach out outside my comfort zone. And last but not least, uh, my parents are here tonight, Ken and Carol. And um, thank you, both of you, for all of your love and support and always being there for me and making it so that I could do the things that I do every day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, Rick, you are up next. You can take your Hershey kiss with you. <laughs> yeah, go up with that. <laughs> I will say that for my team, I am not the culprit of the pictures. It's back there in the corner. <laughs> All right, so this is Rick, and Rick is celebrating 15 years with us. Rick graduated from Cal State Northridge with a degree in communication studies. He was initially hired at Borchard Community Center as the district's first skate park specialist. He grew a successful skate program to include classes, camps, and contests. Realizing he loved the organization and the profession, he applied for a full-time job as an administrative clerk at the Global Adult Center. His successful appointment to the position came with a new set of learning opportunities, which included scheduling the facility, working on program contracts, and putting together the Global Gazette. In 2011, Rick applied to move into the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program director position. The program was just changing over from RSVP, and in Rick's new role, he helped navigate that change. In the position, Rick started Wellness Fest, which is a program that continues to grow and be successful today. In 2017, Rick hopped across the parking lot and was chosen to take on the Teen Center Director position. One of the biggest career accomplishments arose from overseeing the facility and bringing teens together an advisory group to imagine and recommend features for the backyard expansion project, something that just last month we got to see come to fruition. In 2019, Rick was transferred to Dos Vientos Community Center to be the site recreation supervisor. Rick was just learning the ins and outs of the site when the pandemic hit. He introduced new programming to include a quarantine pod camp, as well as um, a preschool, getting a preschool up and running by opening an outdoor classroom. Post-pandemic, Rick has been successful in starting programs up again with the city of Westlake, providing after-school enrichment classes at CVUSD sites, partnering with Ride On for some very successful programming opportunities out at Rancho Potrero, and offering a variety of pop-up special events. While accomplishing all this, Rick also managed to go back to school and obtain his master's in public administration. Rick has been married to his wife, who's here in the audience, Penn, for 16 years. They met at a restaurant where Rick was working as a sushi chef. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. They have two amazing children, Charisma, who's out here also, who's nine, and Keen, who's going to be four, I believe. 
When Rick is not working, he enjoys making sushi, gardening, and skateboarding still. So congratulations and thank you for everything you've done for us, Rick. Dean, you got the mic. What do you want to say? Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I just want to thank the board, administration, park district for 15 years, uh, well, really 20 years that I've had here with the district. And um, with all the roles that I've had, just the one thing that shines through no matter what is the love of um, serving the public. You know, when you see the joy in the eyes of children or the adults or the seniors or anyone who's participating in the programming that we provide, that um, just makes everything worth it, all the hard work and it just all pays off with, with that joy. I do it all for my family. I couldn't do it without the support of my beautiful wife and we do it for our kids. And, you know, this is, this is joy right here. Believe me, it may not look like it, but this is joy. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone. Jim, thank you so much for your support. It's been, been a fun ride. Thanks, Rick. Dean, can you hold this? Can you hold my team? Thank you. <laughs> All right, Eric Bjork. Stepping up. So Eric is our building maintenance crew leader. He's been with the district for over 20 years. And he grew up in the Canal Valley. He's an Agora High School grad. <laughs> And uh, so he's, and he's also the uh, current staff caretaker at the Chumash Museum. Um, so professionally, Eric oversees the building maintenance crew. Um, very good group of guys, but they're very meticulous and well organized. And, and I think that that goes to who's managing them and, and overseeing their, their work schedules and such with uh, Eric and Joe, who we'll speak about later, but they're very logical, very intelligent and trustworthy group, um, I think from top to bottom. And it definitely shows from their leadership. Um, Eric is a craftsman. He excels in woodworking and welding. Um, I remember years ago when McRae Ranch Visitor Center was under development, and this was before my time, but it's a story that was shared with me. Um, they were kind of shopping around um, different companies or fabricators, I guess, to, to do some signage out there. And something that Eric kind of stepped up and um, looked at of doing in-house. So instead of doing it outside, with the contractor and a fabricator, they're able to do it do it in house with Eric's skill set. So pretty pretty impressive. Um, I've worked closely with Eric um, on a handful of uh, building maintenance projects, but as as some development projects that we've had recently. Um, huge asset, great resource helped helped me and the staff and the project along, and just a huge huge resource for the district and its facil our facilities and what we offer to the community with his skill set. Um, Eric is a dad. He's got two daughters, and he he really tries and strives to be a great example for them. That's very important for him. Um, he's got a lot of lot of hobbies. He loves outdoors, um, enjoys cycling as well as mountain biking. Um, he loves working on his Jeep. He does rock crawling with his Jeep. He loves talking about his Jeep. Uh, he, he also enjoys cooking and grilling. Um, fabricating and just kind of making anything better. So he's he's really, really hands-on um, kind of guy. He loves outdoors as well, whether it's the desert or the mountains. Um, and this is a quote from Eric and he wrote it. I did not paraphrase, I didn't make it up, but he enjoys silence, fire, and bourbon. So uh, Eric's, Eric's attitude Eric's attitude, passion, and efforts make him a valuable leader at CRPD. And, and thanks, thank you, Eric, for your 20 years of service with us. Thank you. Now I'm remembering uh, what the staff interviews are about. <laughs> uh, anyways, 20 years goes by pretty fast, um, but it's been fun. It's helpful to, to like what you do and to like the people you work with. So, um, I thank the board and for everybody here that, you know, all these people that put in so much time and effort, thanks for recognizing that because we try to keep it the best it can be and it's good. So thank you. Uh, 
All right, Sarah, you're up. And don't worry, Melissa saved the best pictures for you. It's all about the hair. <laughs> Watch the hair. <laughs> All right, so Sarah is celebrating 20 years with us tonight. Sarah graduated from Cal State University of Northridge with a degree in therapeutic recreation. In 1997, Sarah started her career at CRPD in the therapeutic unit as a recreation leader. She was quickly promoted to the unit's recreation specialist position in 98 and then moved into the role of the organization's first ever recreation therapist in 2001. In this full-time position, she assessed patron needs and came up with program recommendations, helped individuals develop life skills, and assisted other units with inclusion requests. Looking back on 20 years of service, her fondest memory is working to develop the Caneo Theater for Everyone program and stage the program's first production, Snow White. Sarah went back to working part-time when she had her kids, and in 2009, she was ready to return full-time uh, full-time again with and got a job as a recreation coordinator position at the Thousand Oaks Community Center. With the move over to the community center operations, Sarah was instrumental in hosting large special events such as Fishing Frenzy, Haunted Trail, and Touch a Truck. She was able to secure large-scale vehicles such as the Pink Rocket Truck. While working on the site, she organized racquetball tournaments, implemented birthday party packages, and was extremely creative in bringing in unique summer enrichment at camps. She developed fun new youth fitness classes like Kids on the Run. In 2014, Sarah applied for a recreation supervisor position and was moved over to Dos Vientos Community Center to oversee the site. It was in this role that Sarah helped the district strengthen partnerships. She worked to expand City of Westlake Village programming, took over after-school enrichment classes, operations at Sycamore Canyon Elementary, and worked with Pony Baseball. In 2019, Sarah was transferred to the Teen Center, where she is currently the director. Like her college, this transition happened, like her colleague, this transition happened a few months prior to the pandemic when Sarah was just getting the lay of the land. She had the challenging job of providing social distancing programming for the teen population. Being a seasoned programmer at this point in her career, Sarah had lots of ex experience to draw from. She found ways for the youth outreach team to work by partnering with the school district to offer a remote learning site mm -hmm. where staff would ensure that teens were logging on each day instead of ditching their virtual school. Throughout the year, Sarah has proven to be a valued team member, always willing to actively engage in projects, give feedback on facility improvements, and always be flexible. We're extremely proud of her leadership abilities, enhancing each unit she has worked in. She continues to keep her certified therapeutic recreation specialist credential current and is always willing to assist the TR unit whenever needed. Sarah is married to her high school sweetheart, Frank, who's in the audience, and they've been married for 22 years. They have two amazing children, Carson, who is on active duty with the Navy, and Cameron, who is currently works as a lifeguard at the CLU pool. When Sarah's not working, she loves being active and increasing her overall fitness. She loves to camp. Fun fact about Sarah is she is an identical twin. Who would have known? Thank you so much for all your service, Sarah. 20 years is a long time. Thank you, Chair Huffer, members of the board, and of course, all of our staff, wonderful CRPD administration, and then staff that I've worked with over the years. I hired Devin. I um, worked with Melissa, and now um, she supervises me. Um, work with Jay, and who else did I? Oh, and then, no, I guess that's all like in the room, but it's such a small family sense that, um, you know, we're all very close and um you know, it's like a good team. So um, I've, you know, it's like 20, whatever, 23, 24 years total. Um, it goes by really fast. I've had, I think I've been fairly lucky that I've been able to work at so many different locations within the park district that has given me a well-rounded um, experience. Um, so when people are looking for advice, you know, within the general community centers, I've been there, special units there. So um, it's been fun. I've um, really enjoyed my job. I um, started in college and um, I guess they're what you consider a lifer now. <laughs> You're stuck with me. So um <laughs> 
Um, and now I get to work with teens, who ever thought that? So um, thank you to my husband, Frank. Um, he's been on the roller coaster with me all these um, years. My kids, both Cameron and Carson were, um, well, my son was the troublemaker in camp when I was um, <laughs> the coordinator at Thousand Oaks Center, but um, they kind of grew up in all of our programs and um, now Cameron works here as well. So um, it's a great place and I um, appreciate everybody. So thank you. The numbers are getting big. Then we have uh, Bruce Pace via Zoom. So if you can find him on there, Cameron. Hello? Bruce, you there? I am here. Can you hear us? I can hear you. All right. You, are you going to share your video tonight or no? I'm working on it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to start, and then if if you want to show your face, awesome. If not, then that's okay. Um, Do you so want to see my face? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't need to share if you don't want to. Um, so, I'm, Bruce, is Andrew, our, I I am trying. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> so, Bruce is our lead park ranger. He's been been with the district for over 30 years. Um, he has been married for the past 23 years with, with Dina. They have two, there we go. Tech support. <laughs> Tech support, there you go. Um, so, uh, has a son, was that your son who was helping you there? No, that's my, that's my brother. Oh, okay. I could, I couldn't see you with the, uh, so, uh, who his son enjoys art, his daughter who's 15, is an accomplished surfer who recently um, was a part of the state high school championship oh, surf team. Oh, oh, oh. So pr pretty awesome stuff. And and uh, Bruce is pretty pretty proud dad and loves to share um, <laughs> of the accomplishments of his family. <laughs> um, so uh, with with the with Costco and the district, um, Bruce directly oversees the Rangers unit with trails and maintenance work. Uh, he works on uh, over fifteen thousand acres of open space um, with one hundred and fifty miles of trails. Um, he's an organized leader and is our master of trail, trail builder. Um, safety and trails and open space is, is a pride of Bruce's daily job. So he really takes it seriously when, when they're planning and marking out trails and to make it proper for the longevity of open space and the use of the public. Um, so that's really important to him and his crew. Um, and he's really trying to instill that in his crew. Recently, there's, there's been a handful of new faces in the Ranger unit. And uh, Bruce has really kind of taken it upon himself with his experience and background to be able to help train and grow and, and mentor the new faces in the unit. Um, and so when when he is retired, he's not saying when that's happening, but when he is retired, he's leaving this place in in good hands uh, for future for future users and generations. Um, so a fun fact with Bruce in his time, which he started in 1992 here, um, he's been a part of over 35 new trail miles in, in the open space wow. system. So, so pretty awesome out of the 150, wow. he's been involved in about 35 plus the ma maintenance of the other 100 plus that, that were here before him. Um, so personally, he enjoys traveling and he wants to travel as much as possible with his family, um, especially before his kids are, are grown and, and possibly move and move on and grow up with their own families. Um, his hobbies really include everything in the outdoors. He loves surfing. He loves swimming. He loves fishing, hiking, backpacking, uh, mountain biking, as well as he's an avid uh, concert goer. Um, so really enjoys that. Um, with backpacking, he actually started backpacking in the Sierras when he was four years old. And so that's really kind of instilled his interest in being a ranger. Um, so pr pretty, pretty neat background there. Um, as I mentioned, he loves to travel. Uh, he has traveled to almost every state in the U.S., but he's he's traveled a lot internationally. He's been to much of Europe. He's been through Central America. Or Central America. He's been to Thailand and Canada. He has a trip planned for Australia, hopefully in the near future. He he was sharing with me a few weeks back. Um, so Bruce has a great attitude and is a great representative for Costco and CRPD. And and thank you, Bruce, for your 30 years of service with us. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks for, for the yeah. thanks for the kind words. Um, I've been here working for the park district for half my life. And tr yeah, more. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> kind of old, older than you, Andrew. But uh, yeah, like this job is truly a fun job. Um, I enjoy like every part of it, except the drive from Ventura to Thousand Oaks, <laughs> but um, I want to thank my my wife right here, Dina, <laughs> my daughter, come here, she's, she's like, I'm eating dad, <laughs> and my mom over here, say hi, hi. <laughs> and my brother Ryan and his son Jonah. Um, so they're, they're visiting right now and that's, that's why we're here at home. And, uh, we did an amazing whale watching trip today. Recommend that to all of you visiting our own local channel islands. We, we must've saw at least a dozen whales today. So if, uh, you guys want something to do that's fun in your own backyard, go and do it, um, or enjoy all the trails that uh, we, we provide for everybody in Thousand Oaks. I think that's the favorite part of my job is, is building trails, maintaining them, um, just seeing the people out there, enjoying them, and, you know, having them say hi and how much they appreciate everything that uh, we we provide for them, and it, it's pretty cool to have a job where um, you know you're you're doing something that everybody else can enjoy, and sure. you can enjoy it yourself. Like on my days off, that's that's what I do: go out and hike the trails, mountain bike the trails. So, um, but it's, it's been great. I love, <laughs> I love the, I love my coworkers. Um, you know, I've been here a long time, but I, I wouldn't choose any other job. Um, it's as far as like career paths, it, it was the best choice I ever made. So um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, except thank you guys for, uh, you know, providing me a, a great place to work. Um, and thank you. It's been, been a good 30 years for sure. Smile big, Bruce. Jim's going to take a picture with you on the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's my hug, my hug <laughs> arm. Right there. All right. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Joe Tornero. Woo! To the podium. So Joe is joined by his wife, Tamara. Um, Joe is a building maintenance supervisor. He's been with the district for over 35 years. Um, he comes from a military family. He actually grew up in Hawaii and later moved to Ohio. Uh, he joined the military himself and eventually found his way to CRPD. Uh, he was also the caretaker and lived at McCray Ranch for nearly a decade. So Joe, Joe's been a part of the district in, in many ways. Um, from a, from a professional background, he oversees all of our facilities, mostly the buildings, but the structures within, within our parks as well, like playgrounds, 
um, restroom structures as well as shade structures, um, benches, tables, you name it. Joe, Joe and his crew is a part of it. Um, so they're very, or Joe's a really well organized person and the group is ran really well because of, because of Joe. He sets up systems, he plans, and so things run smoothly. So he's really kind of set up a really good system with his crew and, and with Eric um, managing the day-to-day -day type stuff with all, with all their crew. Um, like I shared with Eric, very logical, very intelligent, and very trustworthy with, with how they go about their work and their business. Um, we value Joe's opinion on all aspects of, of projects and, and park maintenance um, and planning of projects and, and dealing with contractors and, and things like that. Um, he's helped standardize processes in my time with materials. Um, I've been able to work with Joe very closely with a lot of our new park development, as well as our redevelopment of our existing parks. Um, I know before my time, he introduced the, the fabric shade structure at Canal Creek North as an option, and we've implemented that throughout our park system for our large shade structures. That's had, really had some cost savings, but really a benefit for the community in use, um, as well as our play equipment um, suppliers, as well as a lot of other building materials, you know, if it goes down to how we're changing out uh, door locks and hinges all the way up to a structure. Um, so again, I've worked really closely with Joe, um, really great resource has been really helpful, uh, over my time and well before my time, he's been doing a lot of great things for the district. Um, a fun fact with Joe, since he's been a part of the district since 1987, we've actually developed 20 new parks that Joe's been, uh, a part of, however, he's been maintaining the other 30 plus parks before that. Um, so just pretty impressive. Uh, with the amount of time, but when you really kind of put the, the tangibleness to what he's accomplished in his time here, as well as the hundreds, if not thousands of other, uh, other um, improvement projects that he's done on, on district property. Um, so a little personal notes with Joe is he does kind of bring his work home with being handy means that he's, he's going to be able to, and being a tradesman, he's, he's going to be doing work at home. So he's, he's got projects at home. Obviously, there's some that he enjoys more than others, but, but, so, <laughs> but it, it is always fun to hear Joe uh, share about what he's working on and what he's planning on and, and fun stuff like that, Sh sharing like homeowner to homeowner type stuff or husband to husband type stuff that's going on. So, uh, but he does enjoy working on his vehicles. Uh, he's got a, a truck, car and a motorcycle. Uh, he does enjoy um, taking rides uh, to visit family and with family on motorcycle rides. Um, he also loves his tiny dog, Rusty. So uh, he enjoys family and spending time with his wife. Um, and he's very proud of his stepson, Jacob, for all of his accomplishments and, and what they've been able to share with him over the years. Um, Joe is a great asset to CRPD and the community that we serve. And uh, thank you, Joe, for your 35 years of service. Thank you, Andrew. That was very nice. Thank you all for being here and appreciate the time. It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it sounds like a lot, but it's really easy because I have had support the whole time and I have a great staff. So my job's actually really easy. Uh, you know, I don't want to pay cut or anything, but <laughs> it's all good. And uh, yeah, thank you all for being here. And thank you again. Well, I strongly suspect that our board members have at least a couple of brief comments. I'm going to start with Director Lang. Oh, my goodness. This is a, a long list of great people. Um, from five years to 35. And uh, Joe was here when I first became a board member in uh, 1990. And all the things that have been accomplished since then, it's amazing. Uh, I took some notes, but you know, it, it's a lot of personal things, interaction that I've had with some of you. And I'm just right now looking at Rick Tanaka. I remember him so much because when we first, CRPD first opened the skateboard park, um, and actually before, I went around to other 
skateboard parks, and one of them being Pleasant Valley uh, Recreation and Park District, to find out what the problems were, the challenges, et cetera, and the liabilities. And uh, one of the concerns that I had was, you know, how do you keep control of all these different individuals who love skateboarding and just want to be out there, you know, and how do you control them? And we didn't have a solution initially. And after a while, it became an, an issue, a problem. And, and then Rick came on board and started to organize the skate park and the programs and the classes. And um, Rick, you did a lot. And one of the things I also remember is you were a sushi cook at the time or before. I can't remember or continue to be. But uh, Rick has so many talents, and as do so many other. I look at Sarah and um, special. So um, you are all special to the Park District and individuals that make the Park District so great and what it is today. And I know that we have a great uh, staff that is uh, behind you and supports you and makes you a great member of the family and team. So I'm gonna be quiet from not mention all these other notes I took, but just know that you're appreciated in the uh, board. We couldn't do it without you, that's for sure. So thank you and God bless. Thank you, Director Buss. So being the newbie, I have to say, this is my second awards meeting for the employees. And I just feel so honored to be a part of this family that you all have, because you guys seem like you are having fun every day at your jobs. I mean, I'm sure it's not every day, but it seems like about 80% of the time that you truly love and have passion for your job. And I love the fact that you enjoy serving the community because I feel like that is just puts you apart from so many other people who go about their days and don't have that value inside of them. So thank you so much for all that you do. And I really feel honored to be a part of this. Thank you, Dirk Cussworth. Yeah, I wrote just a couple notes, but I'll be brief. Um, I was so impressed. Tim, is Tim still here? Oh, there's Tim. Of course, you're sitting right there on the front row. Um, I wrote down, oh, rec leader, cross that out. Oh, he's a senior rec leader. Okay, cross that out. Okay, he's a rec specialist. Okay, cross that out. He's a rec coordinator. I mean, this is in five years. <laughs> and so it really shows what a hard worker you are. Devin, I heard it once that a society can be judged by how they treat those who are less fortunate than they are. And so you, and I guess Sarah also, because I didn't know that Sarah was also involved in therapeutic recreation. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. It really shows uh, how great our community is by having people like you. So thank you. Um, also, uh, Shelly, I've talked about it so much. I have to do this. I'm retiring. And that's LAUSD. They have something called a a Ask HR that you can email. And I have literally thought many times, I wish I could just ask Shelly. <laughs> I wish I could just go over and ask Shelly and Shelly could guide me through this and it would be so easy. So um, I really appreciate, I've just appreciated in this last year how important having a human resources person is. So I know I can appreciate everybody wanting to ask you and you're keeping everybody happy and you know on task and through all their videos they probably have to watch, right? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Shelly. Mark, you're one of the first people I ever met here because you set up my computer. And I'm not, I will not uh, praise myself as an IT person. So uh, thank you with all of your patience. And then I came back a few times saying it's not working. And you always did. I think I've got it down now, but thank you so much for your IT and all that you did during COVID. Uh, to bring everything to pass. It was so wonderful. And um, Rick, boy, you've just been everywhere. So thank you. You and Sarah both. And you've kind of changed jobs, haven't you? I mean, you kind of go around and do things. Um, Sarah, I just wanted to mention to you real quickly with all of those pictures, I think you've gotten younger. I, I don't know if it was the hair or what it is, but as we're looking, I go, wow, she's looking better and better all the time. I mean, how often does that happen? So um, Eric, I'm glad to meet you. 
I used to go to all of the uh, board meetings for the Chumash Museum and they'd always say, oh yeah, we'll talk to Eric about it. Yeah, I think Eric already took care of that. No, Eric can climb up and do that. Um, so I know how much they appreciate you over there. And it uh, sounds like you're a great asset to our community. And um, Bruce, well, Bruce, I don't know if he's here anymore, but Bruce, I love our trails. So thank you, Bruce, if you're out there. And Joe, wow, 35 years, and I wanna make a comment. You have an easy job when you know what you're doing and you've trained other people to do it right. So thank you so much for your 35 years. I don't know how much we'll keep you, but we're glad you've, you've been here for most of the time that people have lived in Canal Valley and have enjoyed everything that's going on. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you to all of you. It, it just warms my heart when we do this because I love to get to know you and your families and your hobbies. And I don't get to be working with you all the time. So it's nice to be able to see all of you here. So thank you for all of your service. Doug? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's great to see all of you. Uh, and thanks for bringing your families. I know we, we, we hear often that you think this is your daytime family. I think Shelly mentioned that. And, and you appreciate the camaraderie and the, uh, the family that you have here. But to share your families with us, thank you for being here. It's nice to see what keeps these people pumped up and excited to come to work all the time. Appreciate that. What I also got a kick out of is, is the people in a recreation it's like they have to be toned down a little bit to speak at the microphone. Then you get the, the folks out in parks and planning and you got to kick them to get over there to talk and say a few words. <laughs> but it's nice to have you here where we can see you. We, we, we get to see these fine folks on a regular basis. But, you know, this is the group that makes things happen. Uh, you know, we say that often. You know, you're the face that, the, that our community sees, whether it's on the trails or uh, in programming or at the community centers. And, and you are what they see as the park district. You know, not us, not often to them unless it's a complaint or something, um, but it's it's you folks. So so thanks for making things work and work well. A couple of notes that I had that really caught my attention is I heard a lot about, oh, this person created this program, this person did this program, this person thought of this better way to do things. And that's what I also appreciate, appreciate about the organization. I think it starts at the top with their general manager and goes through the whole staff is to, just allow the staff to be creative and to come up with ideas and give things a try and to make it work. If you, you know, you're, hey, if, the, if that, you know, fabric cover is going to be better than a wood cover, let's give it a try. Um, you know, if that, if that uh, new program is going to work. In fact, I just got a compliment this last weekend. Someone saying, we really enjoyed having the flashlight egg hunt in our own local park. You know, it was nice to be close and to avoid some of the chaos. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that was somebody's idea. Somebody had an idea. I don't want you to spread things out. So, I mean, that just really shows the creativity and just you know, doesn't always have to be the same way of doing things. And it doesn't matter if it's building a new trail or, or a new program, but I hear that often. So thank you for that. Uh, and I think uh, we heard it many times, you know, I like what I do. It's fun here. Well, you may like it here and it's fun here, but you, you make it so that the community likes it here and they think it's fun. So it's part of a reflection of who you are and what you do. And that you also you know, like to help people in the community. And it shows, you know, in your day-to-day -day activities and, and, and also just the way you share with us. Uh, gosh, and, and to hear some people think this is the best career choice, I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, especially when I hear, and I've heard many, many times of somebody that started because they were in a orchard park preschool class and now they're an employee you know 20 30 years later we've heard that many times or that they started as a volunteer you know to to have that community tie and connection uh again it's it's just part of part of who the park district is and, and that's how you make it and then the support so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you feel like you get support uh you know obviously if you didn't you know you would probably go somewhere else so I pr appreciate that so appreciate you sharing those themes uh, but I just want to thank you, you know, as, as much as I possibly can for what you do. Um, you know, and if you have some new ideas, share them, you know, and if you, you've got a better way of doing things, let us know. Because that's what I think what makes uh, this particular park district, you know, kind of standing above many of the others. And I say that uh, with a little bit of knowledge because I'm, I work a lot with uh, Rec and Park Districts throughout the state. And, you know, the Caneo is seen as like the flagship in many respects, you know, how, what do they do? How do they do it? And uh, they look to this group and you are part of that for kind of setting that standard. So thank you for making that reputation possible and, and continuing to do that. 
And I, I hope to see you all in another five years, even if it's been 35 already. So. <laughs> 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 thank you all thank you and i just i want to add my thanks um as as several of the directors have already said it's you folks that make the park district what it is for our community uh when the staff gets phone calls or emails from people who are complimenting one of the parks or one of the facilities it's you folks that are making that possible when we as board members get an email or a comment from a friend about, wow, that trail was so neat, or that that program that, that you put on was so wonderful for myself or my kids. So it's, it's you folks that do that. Um, 180 years, that's just the 11 people that we are recognizing tonight. And if you add in your friends and coworkers who are supporting you here tonight, and you know, we've got several hundred years, I'm sure, represented in the room. Um, thank you so much. I, as, as Director Lang said, I've, I've put notes down on, on each one of you. Several of you I know pretty well over the years that I've been involved with the district. Um, uh, Rick, I, Rick was at the Canal Senior Volunteer Program when, when I started with the tax program there. And um, th that's the, the, all the volunteer work that is done through CSVP is pretty amazing. And then to follow you through the teen center and now Dos Vientos, as, as someone said, you've just been hopping all over and, and doing a great job everywhere that you go. Um, several people mentioned about um, how things were transitioned during the COVID period. And one of the major transitions that we had to make was um, all, all of the uh, remote audio video that we're able to do. I know when we talked about it four or five years ago, one of our board members said, you know, why is it that the city televises their meetings and the school board televises theirs? You don't do it at the district. Well, you know, we're kind of a small organization and it's kind of expensive. And then boom, COVID hit. Mark and his staff were right there. And, you know, it, it's so great that people... <laughs> Thousands of people who tune in tune into our meetings every month <laughs> now have an opportunity to do that. So um, th thanks to you and your staff, but to all of you, we really, really do appreciate uh, what you do, not for the district, but for our community. Um, as, as Director Nichols said, um, several of you mentioned this is your daytime family, but you brought your evening and morning family uh, to so they can see some of the people that you work with, some of the people that that uh, you respect and that respect you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you have done and will continue to do for the park district. And with that, thank you. Take a, a little yeah. and take a group photo. Yeah, yeah, if we can get all of the honorees up front here, we get a get a group photo and then, then take a few minutes. Okay, well, we will reconvene our meeting and we are on item four items from the public. Do we have any public waiting online? No, thank you very much. Um, item five approval of the agenda. It's been suggested that after the, uh, I guess, after, after the consult, consent calendar, if we go to um, 9A so that we can cover that item. So with that modification, if we could uh, get approval of the agenda. So move. Director Lang, thank you. I'll second. Thank you very much. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, item six, consent calendar. Items 6A and 6B. I move. I will entertain approve. a motion. Director Lang. Approve 6A and 6B as thank presented. Thank you. Uh, I will second that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we're going to jump over to. We take uh, a vote. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. All okay. in, any discussion? If not, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. We're going to jump over to nine A, uh, selecting an external external financial auditor. I'm guessing Ms. Smith will handle this. Yes. Thank you, Chair Huffer and Directors. We also have. 
Binzeng from M, uh, I'm going to mess this up, MLH. I'm just going to say MLH. Um, here to answer any of your questions. Um, but in short, we um, it's best practices for us to replace auditors every five years or so. And so we've been with our current firm for about four years. So we sent out an RFP and we were very fortunate to get fortunate to get two responses from two firms that we're very comfortable with. We've worked with both firms previously. Um, and we felt on, uh, on ba based on the criteria that I included in the packet for you, that we wanted to go with MLH, um, not only for CRPD, but also for MRCA services. And so um, I'll keep it really brief. I don't know if Ben wants to say anything as well. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate, oh, it's weird when you hear your own voice now. But yeah, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to work with the, the district and the authority again. Um, you know, I, I was here five years ago to present the audit last time. Um, since then, I've moved into the community. So I, I live in Agora Hills now. I'm also the city treasurer there. Um, had a, a daughter and then, you know, we're starting to participate in uh, CRPD or take advantage of the CRPD services. So it's great. And I think part of the reason why we moved to this um, area, to the Valley is, is because of what we saw here earlier. You know, people just would really enjoy, it just seems like a great group of people, you know, that work at the district and just in general. So yeah, we appreciate the opportunity and we look forward to uh, working with you all. Good, thank you very much. You. Uh, questions or Director Lang? No, no questions, just a comment, but it's great to have a familiar face you know, working for us and doing the things that we need to do. And uh, the confidence that you and your organization showed us before, obviously, in my mind, impacted the selection. So uh, welcome back and uh, keep up the good work. You know, and I, I saw you and your beautiful family at Stonehouse um, not too long ago, a couple months back. But yeah, everyone seems busy, so I didn't really... Uh... I didn't really make a comment, you know, say anything, but I, I, I will next time for sure. Well, yes, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, feel free. It'd be my pleasure. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No. All right. I will entertain a motion to um, act on staff recommendation. I'll make a motion. Thank you very much. Um, so, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, we would like to approve uh, this, select the, I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. Yeah. Authorize the general manager to sign a three-year agreement with Moss Levy and Hartzheim. Is that how you say it? Hartzheim? <laughs> uh, LLP for external audit services. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll second that. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for coming over. Fortunately, it wasn't too long a commute tonight, so. Okay, item seven on the agenda, deferred matters. I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Friedel. Uh, thank you, Chair Hover, members of the board. Uh, this was in front of you a couple meetings ago and I, um, I didn't really provide enough backup material for the information provided to the board. So I went ahead and um, had a few more attachments to the proposed um, resolution. Um, that is on page 43. So you can see the actual changes that I had made to kind of um, tighten up the resolution a little bit, take kind of some of the, some of the more, um, I don't know um, the right word, but colorful, the colorful language out. So I tried to, thank you. Thank you, Chair Nichols. Took some of the more colorful language out so that ultimately what, what we're asking, what we're suggesting is that the California Business Roundtable measure has it, it seems that it has some drafting shortcomings that would make litigation extremely likely over so many of the different ways government um you know taxes and issues fees and charges and exactions that um it's just ripe for uh, lots of litigation and so the league csac the california state association of counties and california special districts have all taken opposed positions on it and um, as as a, a good member of CSDA and being asked um, to to kind of join the cause, uh, I'm putting this in front of the board to consider adopting this resolution, which would oppose the um, 
proposed initiative. I don't actually have the number here, 21004-2A1, which is um, kind of uh, in my, I guess if I had to summarize what it is, it, it's, a, it's kind of a sledgehammer to a concern about taxing issues with the state that that not only deals with state issues, but deals with local government issues, which is, of course, where our concerns come in. So um, I can certainly answer any questions you have, but there's a lot of written materials in here and happy to answer questions. Do we have any questions? Uh, Director Nichols. Comments? Comments, yes. Okay. Yes. Questions or comments? All right, very good. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chair and uh, General Manager, Friedel, thank you for the additional information. I, just so you know, I did read through it all. A lot of notes, a lot of underlines, uh, a, a few questions, but I think more than anything else is, um, personal observations because of the resolutions, or, or I guess the uh, propositions that have gone on in the past and which seem to be the, the crux of the, I don't know if it's the crux of it, it seems to me, whether it be you know, uh, Prop 13, Prop 218, Prop 26, as those have been passed in the past and now seem to be on the uh, uh, discussion point here. Uh, on one hand, some of those have been changed over time and then the point that the new presentation that we have here before us is making is that those that have been passed in the past have not been followed as was intended. And so they're trying to really tighten the thumb screws to not only make it the way that they believe it was intended to be, but keep it from even changing and making it more difficult to change. Uh, I understand that, and I think probably more so from a taxpayer than I than perhaps as a board member. I think we all, as taxpayers, don't want to pay any more than we absolutely have to, and if we can you know, reduce that, then then so be it. Um, but as I was you know reading through this, uh, trying to remember which hat I was wearing at any given time, whether it be a, as a taxpayer or a board member, I is reflecting back on, you know, when Prop 13 first passed, you know, I wasn't a homeowner back at the time. Now I am. It's just like, okay, I like Prop 13 as a, as a homeowner. Uh, it makes a big difference, um, except when you sell and buy again, then it's just like, oh, darn, there goes that savings. Uh, <laughs> but, and, and then when these other, when, you know, Prop 218 and 26 passed, we're making sure that two thirds of a vote had to take place by the electorate before a tax could actually be enacted. I thought, hey, that's a great idea. I like that idea. Uh, and then I guess that was maybe Prop 26 and then Prop 218 on trying to define when a fee is a fee and when a tax is a tax. You know, it is, is it equally distributed with everybody or is it truly just a fee for service that's, that's serving an individual or a group or the baseball team or however it applies? Um, so I was reflecting on all those, and I thought, you know, I, I liked when all those passed, and those were all passed by a vote of the people. And so I, I really hold strong to that, is that that's, you know, those need to be retained. Um, so the dilemma that I was faced in reading through this is that the, on the one hand, the, the you know, local government, such as our own, wants to be able to retain as much possible uh, flexibility in trying to provide for the park district. Uh, and then while at the, on the other hand, it's to say, yes, but as a taxpayer, I only want to pay what's reasonable or what's appropriate is taxes. And what I always liked about the two thirds vote, I felt it was kind of like our, our capitalism it, in a tax sense. And if you've got a really good idea and people really want it and support it, then you will get two thirds vote to support it and we'll pass that tax because it's for something that they want. You know, and I would even say that for our for a revenue measure. And if, and if we don't have the two thirds support, then either it's not a very good idea or we haven't communicated or demonstrated what it's going to be used for. And so you haven't done a good job. So I always felt that that two thirds vote was something really that, that should be retained. 
I know the schools have changed that, uh, which I don't particularly care for, but again, that's, you know, that's on the past. Uh, so those are the kind of things that I've been battling back and forth with as I've been reading through this, is it seems like on one hand, uh, they're trying, nobody wants to leave it, 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 it the way it is. It's like either trying to erode it even further to be able to have more opportunities to get uh, revenue, or they're trying to crank it back so you have less opportunities than what's already on the books. And it seems like there's nowhere in between of can we just leave it the way that it is? Uh, and so that's where I was struggling as I was reading through this, um, where it's like you have to choose a side on either you support it or not. And, you know, and, and there's nothing in between that says, well, can we just leave it alone? So, so that's where I was trying to, you know, get to the nuts and bolts. So I appreciate all the extra material that you provided, because as I was reading through that, it kind of clarified a, a lot of it for me. I, I knew the essence of it. Um, but as I was kind of looking at that, that list of, you know, who supports it and who opposes it, well, it's all the taxpayers that oppose it. And it's all the tax users that support it. And so that, okay, no surprise with that. You know, that, that's going to be the case. I did have one question for you though, if I could. And this goes to the page 74 of our packet. And this is in the, uh, the LAO assessment. And in the, let's see, I guess it's the third paragraph, current requirements to approve taxes and fees. And the last sentence says, currently local governing bodies have the ability to delegate their authority to adjust fees and other charges to administrative entities like city departments. Sorry, the last two sentences. In these cases, these charges can be increased or changed by the department within certain limits. Is that reflective of, of the park district as well? So I'm not exactly sure what part they're thinking of when they wrote that, but basically we have all of our programmatic fees set by staff because they're kind of market-based. So like how much is a yoga class on a Wednesday night at six at Dos is going to cost? Um that is something that staff sets and negotiates with the independent contractor that's going to provide the class, that kind of thing. So staff sets all the programmatic fees. At the next meeting, I think you're going to get the fees, rentals, and charges. So those the board approves. And that's for the general public to rent picnic structures and rent rent rooms in the community centers or rent a athletic field, that kind of thing. So, so that's how we've been doing it historically. Um, I think if the board were to have a review over every fee in charge within, say, the rec program guide, that would be kind of unwieldy. That would be really hard to imagine how to operate the business easily, at least be nimble anyway. But um, that's how we're set up. I think what they're suggesting here might be bigger than us. Like, I think maybe within, say, this a big city like a city of L.A., maybe they allow for and have certain fees within big departments set by the department itself maybe subject to some sort of internal like appeal process or something I'm, I'm not sure i'm not exactly sure what specifically they're referring to but um like i know i'm thinking at the city they have like all the city application fees for development permits and all sorts of things they're all set by council mm -hmm. not by say the planning staff mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, yeah. And I also want to clarify that uh, having worked for a municipal government for many years, uh, I, I've been through the, the fee setting and assessment process many, many times, including a very comprehensive uh, cost recovery fee based system that took us about 18 to 24 months to go through, where, as we've talked and they had talked about here, to actually identify that, where we were actually determining, okay. How much time did that person, that person, that person, that person, that person spend on that particular item to cause it? And then how much of this building is associated with that? Where, where we went through a very, very comprehensive and detailed process. And then you set that as your base and then cost of living, and then you just you know, adjust it. So I, I know what that takes and it is very comprehensive, but the whole purpose was that to, uh, to serve the community in such a way where you set fees 
that were reasonable and appropriate. It takes a lot of work. Uh, it can be done, but but it, it does take a lot of work to, to get there. So I am familiar with that process. Uh, wasn't fun, wasn't easy, but it was it was a very educational process to to go through. Um, and I I believe at the heart of it, where some of the language that I read here reminded me of that process. And they say, yeah, that's what we want. We don't want some staff person just say, well, guys, they're charging thirty bucks over there. You know, we can charge thirty bucks here. I say, well, well, yes, but what does it actually cost to provide that program? Uh, so I'm I'm sensitive to that. Uh, because I, I dealt with a lot of phone calls on why our fees were the way that they were, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I had to explain it, and it's not always easy. And you can always give the excuse, it's set by the board, it's set by the city council, um, but, you know, a lot of things that were that way, and even in the city that I was working at, they had multiple of these things come before them from multiple departments, and so I, you know, know that they were not fully aware, truly, of what they were approving, so to speak. So that's why it's, it's just very sensitive. I'm very sensitive to that and very aware of that. Uh, also trying to be aware that, I'm, that I have been elected to this job to watch out for the taxpayers of our community, as well as the, uh, the, the program users. Uh, so that's why I appreciate the extra effort to go through this and to, um, you know, really understand the essence of it. And while I know some of the colorful languages there is, is maybe not always to be scary, but it's a potential of, of what may or may not occur. So I, I appreciate that. So I'll stop uh, you know, just wandering at that point and open up for uh, anybody else wants to talk. Director Cussworth. So thank you, um, Director Nichols. I actually had some of the very same thoughts that you did. And uh, I was thinking of the exact thing, taxpayer park. And it was a comment that you made when it was several years ago because you were still working full time as a um, fire marshal and you had gone to a conference and you said it was overcrowded in the building, which knowing you, was probably very difficult for you because you knew that people were not following the fire regulations of having the right amount of people in the building. And you made this statement, which I remembered. You said, I had to take off my fire marshal hat and I had to put on my CRPD hat. I'm not, I was not here as a fire marshal. I was here representing the park district. And so I thought of that because definitely um, I own a home. I don't want to pay more taxes. Those sorts of things are something we all think. But I thought, I am voting on something as a board member of CRPD. And so then I thought of two things. Is this um, going to benefit CRPD? And is it necessary? So my first thing I thought of was <laughs> to benefit. I thought, we run our organization through taxes and fees. So anything that would limit that, I don't think would benefit this organization because that is how we get our money is through taxes and fees. And if we're not able to have um, a good income that is not benefiting the community to the level that they are expecting. Um, and then I thought, is this necessary for our organization? Maybe some or oversight is necessary for some other government organizations, but I'm going to have to credit you again to where I came up with an idea. It was when you brought up the issue of the credit card. And I will admit, when you first brought that up, I thought, we have a lot of balances. We have supervisors signing things. They can only spend so much. I'm sure it's fine. But because of your question, Mrs. Smith put together an incredible presentation on how our finances are run, which I think we all remember and could agree and should be on our website. And I remember that afterwards, I was very impressed by it. Um, and I remember afterwards, you even said, well, why do we even have to have anything in here if we're, you know, that we have such a good, you know, it was kind of, why should we do anything? So I thought, well, we obviously are very well run. We are very fiscally responsible. 
And I remember, I think it was just last week, I had the question, do we change our auditing companies frequently? I already knew the answer. I knew we did because I had been here when we had changed companies. I just wanted it to be on the record that no, we're not just using so-and-so's brother-in-law for the last 20 years to be auditing us and they're just showing the audit that we want. So no, we are very fiscally responsible. We're audited. We have a lot of checks and balances that come in. So do I think it's necessary? No, I don't think it's necessary for our unit. Um, I don't think that it, this will benefit our unit. And I feel that I have to look at this through the eyes of a CRPD board member at this time. So that's kind of the feeling that I took towards this as I was thinking through this. And as I was, I read a lot of these things. I also looked at a lot of things on the internet and looked at a lot of um, varying opinions, but I thought that was how I looked at it for this. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, just, just a, a couple of comments. Director Cussworth has already um, talked about which hat she's wearing in which situation. Um, you know, I've lived in my house for over 40 years, and it's great that my property taxes are probably a quarter of what my newly moved in neighbor is paying for exactly the same house. Okay. It's great. Um, and I wasn't on the board back when Prop 13 was passed. I was not on the board when Prop 218 was passed. Um, and I was, I don't think there have been any ma major measures like that since I've been on the board, but I know having talked to Director Lang and others who have been on the board that these various measures to limit taxes for public entities like the Park District um, have made life very difficult and uh, having to either cut back on programs or facilities or come up with workarounds in order to continue to deliver what we are tasked to deliver to our community. So wearing the park district director hat rather than my taxpayer hat, I have to say, you know, there are a lot of unknowns with something like this, but I would rather, well, you, you also made the point, you said there are groups out there that are trying to um, eliminate some of the restrictions that we have on taxation. There are other groups out there which are perhaps trying to increase the restrictions on, on taxation. And I believe I'm quoting you correctly when you said, why don't we just leave it alone? Well, by supporting the other organizations, local organizations and statewide organizations that are in opposition to this um, initiative, basically what we're saying is we don't love the situation we're in now, but we don't want to make it worse. So let's just leave it where it is. If we and all the other organizations support this resolution to oppose the initiative, we're, we're at least choosing to leave things where they are. We don't know if it's gonna be worse, we don't know if it's gonna be better, but if we oppose this initiative, at least we're dealing with familiar, ter familiar territory. So wearing my park director hat and preferring to leave things where they are um, I'm, I'm strongly in, in support of this resolution, and I would love to see if it's possible to get unanimous support for this resolution from our board. So with that, if there are no other further comments or questions. Um, if I could just make a, make a, a final, final, Go final right comment. Uh, I appreciate uh, both, uh, both of your input on some of the things I said, and and I'm glad to see you have a better memory than I do. But I, now that you refresh it, I do remember saying those things. So <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I would say that the, I, I would agree, Chair Huffer, that by opposing it, the intent is to uh, discourage passing that new initiative and just to kind of leave the status quo as it is. Uh, because as I was reading in the initiative, that there, there, there are some changes to the existing 
process and that would you know, perhaps even change things more. So as a taxpayer, I have the opportunity to cast my vote on that initiative mm -hmm. if it's on the ballot, I presume so, in 2024. And those who want to, you know, to do so you know, may or may not. Uh, so yeah, certainly as a, as a taxpayer. But the other thing I want to clarify is, it, is while I do take my job seriously as a board member for the district, uh, I, I feel more strongly that I've served the community that I serve the district. In other words, I'm not here just to make sure the district gets what the park district wants. Uh, I'm here to serve the community because they're the ones that elected me through this role. So maybe I perceive that a little bit differently because they, they are the ones that I re report to. I don't report to, to anybody here. I report to the taxpayers and to the voters. So I just see, I just kind of take that a little different perspective because uh, they're the ones that cast the votes and they're the ones that want me here. And mm -hmm. they're the ones that can say yay or nay and no one here has that uh, as authority. So I just, I just see that as a little bit differently. I still want to act on, on the best interest of the park district, but I'm beholden to the voters. So I just want to clarify okay. that. Thank you. So, that. Yeah. Okay, if there are no further comments, this is a resolution, so we're going to... Can I, we got a couple. Can I make a comment? I know, we need a motion for... No, comments. She wants to make a comment. Oh, I'm sorry, comment. Oh, sorry. Um, I agree with you that we are definitely beholden to the taxpayers, but I think that we have to think about that the taxpayers may not mind paying more in taxes if they felt that there was a true benefit, right? Because most people don't want to pay more in taxes if they feel that they're not seeing the value for it. So I think we have to keep that in mind as well, that when we're thinking about them, that they may not mind if they are paying a little bit more because CRPD's yoga class is well lit and heated, you know, whatever it is, or has aromatherapy, what have you. So I think it's things like that, that we have to also think about that, not just coming from our own standpoint of wanting to not pay more because there's plenty of people who pay more if it's really good service and quality, right? Yeah. And I think we have great service and quality here. Mm -hmm. So that's just my comment on that. Mm -hmm. I just have one more quick comment. And I really respect what you say. And I really respect your feelings. But I have to think that we were voted to be directors of CRPD. That's what we were voted to do, that we would be managing CRPD and that was our job that's what we were voted to do so I can very respectfully see that we have different opinions but I think we do need to think of what we were elected to do that was our job to watch over this um, district okay thank you very much director Lang Yes, a lot of comments I could make, but what stuck with me in a comment that uh, Chair Huffer mentioned, um, you know, if we don't have the funds, I'm not sure this is exact, you know, we have to make some, you know, tough decisions, budgets and so forth. And I was on this board in 96 when 218 uh, hit us. And I kind of, um, we can't think of the term, but I was kind of the lead on, you know, these are decisions we have to make. You know, we don't want to make them because we had to dissolve a whole division of CRPD, uh, 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 not a division, but uh, an entity. And um, the word got out that I was kind of the not the leader, but I was very vocal at the time. And I got a very serious threatening phone call because of that. And that really shook me up because the first time, you know, I've been a board member for six years by then, but still the first time that I got that kind of a threatening and uh, had to involve um, law enforcement and everything. But these are tough decisions that we as board members have to make. And I agree with um, board member Huffer, um, Nichols in that we got, you know, 
two hats kind of to, to wear here and that we have to, uh, I think, number one, serve the district. Um, it isn't always a, a good decision or an easy decision that we have to make, but it is a district that we are, I think, elected to and that we have to utilize our knowledge, our skills and experience to make those decisions. So uh, I, I support this uh, resolution and I believe that uh, considering our staff and, and every other organization that is supporting this, I think we're uh, heading in the right direction and that's not the right word I wanted to use, but uh, again, I, I support this resolution and I thank our general manager for taking the extra time and the effort to modify it and, and uh, provide the additional thoughts and, and so forth. So thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. If there are, any, if there are no further comments, uh, I will look for a motion on, on this resolution. Okay. Direct, Director Lang. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 040623-A opposing initiative 21-0042A1, which limits ability of voters and state and local governments to raise revenues for government services. Thank you very much. Can I get a second for that? I'll second it. Thank you very much. We it'll be read as after now that we've had a motion and a second. We get a full reading of the resolution, Madam Secretary. Resolution number 040623-A, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Conejo Recreation and Park District opposing initiative 21-0042A1, which limits ability of voters and state and local governments to raise revenues for government services initiative constitutional amendment. Thank you very much. We have a motion of second and reading of the resolution. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. It carries unanimously. Okay, let's move on to item eight, items for discussion. I don't believe we have any. Item nine, we've already covered 9A, so we'll go to 9B, preliminary oper operating budget, fiscal year 2023-24. I'm guessing, Ms. Smith, this is yours? Yes, thank you, Chair Huffer and directors. So um, just as a reminder, this is kind of the kickoff to our budget process. Uh, we're, we're legally required to adopt a preliminary budget by June 30 of every year, but this um, is just the exact same budget that we already approved for this current fiscal year. It starts as the stimulus for our budget um, process, and it does allow for some spending to happen if something were to come up and we were not able to pass the final budget by July 1. This is still us uh, basic spending authority for us to continue work until we can pass the final one. Um, but other than that, it's just the stimulus to the budget process, and we're working on that, and you'll be getting updates as we go through it and I'm available for any questions. Do we, <clears throat> excuse me, do we have any questions from Ms. Smith? No, in that case, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Director Nichols. Uh, follow staff recommendation to approve resolution number 040623-B. Is this indeed a resolution? It doesn't have Yeah, we do. On page 112, 122. 121. Oh, well, yeah. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I have a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Can we have a reading of the resolution, please? Resolution number 040623-B, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Conejo Recreation and Park District adopting the fiscal year 2023 to 2024 preliminary budget for the district. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second reading the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. 9C, purchase of a 12 to 14 yard dump truck. I'm guessing maybe Andrew's territory. Yes. Thank you, Chair Huffer, members of the board. Um, staff is recommending to replace our current dump truck with the one specified in your report. Um, this dump truck will be a new piece of equipment that will provide greater efficiency for the work that we're doing. 
um, and it is meeting the emission standards the state puts on our um, heavy equipment and vehicles. The dump truck, the current dump truck and this dump truck will be used um, for routine maintenance work, um, our annual refurbs as well as special projects. So we can haul uh, materials with this from our from yards, from park to park, um, from other delivery um, yards to park property, as well as it tows our heavy equipment and tractors and such. Um, the capacity will increase. It is a little bit larger. It's a few yards larger, depending on the type of material that you put in the bed, um, but it's about a 15 to 20 percent increase. Um, so that means less less trips, less less travels and such. Um, and most importantly, it would for to, for touch a truck would uh, be able to uh, utilize 40 to 50 more beach balls when they drop them for the kid. Very important. So. Uh, that, that was Jim's joke. I don't want to take credit for it. Um, there is a picture of, of the uh, truck on uh, page 143 of your report. Um, so with that, I'm available for questions. Yes. Dr. Cussworth. Um, uh, my question is, does it really have to do with us buying this dump truck? But I know California is wanting to have all large machinery to be electric, but... I forgot the year, but I don't so know, 10 it, years or so. In in time, there's current legislation out there. Um, we are doing some training with our staff. Um, there is a we're we're looking at doing some phasing with it. So it's it's more so new, new equipment purchases. And so we're working with our staff to to figure out where we're headed in the direction to make sure we can meet the requirements as well as pay for it. Since well, since my main that wasn't really my question, but my question was, do you think that a dump truck of this capacity could ever be electric, or are we going to have to have all new technology to get something like that to be electric? Currently, there are large, large hauling vehicles that are electric or hybrid. Um, currently, there isn't something to replace it right now. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, because our trailer, our, our new hybrid car doesn't even, it pulls our trailer, but not as well as the other one did. Mm. So I thought something like this, I wouldn't even see how it could even go hybrid, but I guess they're giving enough time that perhaps there'll be new technology. So that was my question. Any other questions? Director? Ladies first. Oh. <laughs> Director, you. <laughs> um, I have a question. So it had said, I thought in the report that you would maybe sell the old one out of state. Correct. I was just curious, did, what's the Kelly Blue Book on one of these? Um, I would have to double check to see current, but it's not very much within the state of California. Right. The, that's the, the, the value, like... the value of it, because it doesn't meet emission standards. So we technically cannot sell it in the state if we're following the rules. Right. You, that's what it said. You're going to sell it out of state. So no idea what it would be. Worth uh, currently, I don't have a, a current rate on it. Yeah. Will you be selling it right away? Um, no. So the, the tricky part right now, even just for like a standard pickup work truck, quite a bit of lead time. So okay. we, if we order this within the next few weeks, uh, if we approve it tonight, or if, you, if the board approves it tonight, um, it would be possibly by the end of this year, if yeah. not this time next year, is kind of the window to receive it. Um, so we've been still utilizing our, our existing dump as needed, but. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, Director Lang. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my questions, you know, selling it out of state or, there are probably some dealers who sell it wherever because I think there is an opportunity to get some residual funding out of this. Uh, the other thing, it's less, well, it's about 20 years old, correct? Uh, it's currently, the current asset is a, a 2009. Okay. So it's it, typically we go about 15 years <laughs> for this piece of equipment, but however, since it does not meet current emission standards, we, we moved up the purchasing of the new unit so we can continue because currently we're restricted with how much mileage we can drive the existing dump truck. Okay, that was a missing uh, piece that I now better understand because that isn't to me that old and I know the uses that you mentioned it's uh, utilized for aren't that hard on a dump truck. But anyway, now I understand so. So, so, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Um, I'm really disappointed I didn't get to ask the question about the beach balls. That was right. That was on top of my list. Was it the beach? You had and, that? Yeah, and it was. It yeah, was. Joke. I just kept. And that's just an estimate because it depends on what type of beach ball. Because mm -hmm. I did talk to Rochelle's folks just to say, hey, how many do we usually put back there? Um, but yeah, it, it will be more fun for the kids. All right. And then my, my other compelling question was, have you had, had a chance to test drive this yet? Me personally, no. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair? All right. Uh, uh, Director yeah, Nichols. Is this a follow-up to the beach ball question? I, I was wondering, when are we going to graduate from the touch-a-truck to the drive-a-truck day? Yeah. <laughs> or at least the board members. Uh, we can come back to the board with, <laughs> with a report to make that happen if you win. Okay. I think we're about time for... Well, I have uh, one more question. Well, Director Lang, I have a com first, comment. So. And along those lines, your predecessor, Mr. Hare, promised me an opportunity to drive that water truck. Uh, it's uh, uh, those Fientos. Uh, the, the, it's currently at uh, Ranch Petrero Equestrian, the water truck you're speaking of. Okay, that's right. That's right. And that never materialized. Hare retired and didn't. Uh, you know. Sorry, sorry, Tom didn't live up to his promise. Yeah, right. So I'll keep that in the back of my mind for some future opportunity. So um, my question is, I know that our staff has to get a lot of certifications to be able to, you know, drive this type of machinery. Are you qualified to drive that dump truck? Uh, me personally? You personally. On, on city streets, no. But if it was on our property and in a safe training environment, I'm sure our, our licensed permit folks could could oversee some sort of training. They, they could watch over you to drive it as long as you were on our property. Possibly, okay. yes. Okay, possibly. I'm saying, I mean, it's 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 hard to know how to drive those big, uh, you know, vehicles. Yeah, well, you did such a good job of driving the um, dumpster or the- I uh, had one of my friends who has, used to be a licensed contractor who said he wanted to hire me uh, because I looked so good in that excavator or whatever it is, that digger. All right. Well, I think we've we've covered this in in great detail. So I will ex I will entertain a motion for staff recommendation. Director Cussworth. I recommend that we award the purchase in the total amount of two hundred and seven thousand, et cetera, to a PB loader. Thank you very much, I'll I, second Director that. Lang. Second. Any further questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. 9D, agreement between the CVUSD and the CRPD. Uh, is this yours, Mr. Friedel, or it's going to Rochelle? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chair Heffer, members of the board. So in um, 1988, we started a shared use agreement with CVUSD and CRPD. Um, in April of 2020, we updated it, and in that, uh, the term is three years, so we are at that time where we need to um, do an amendment to it uh, if we want to extend it. Every year in March, uh, I meet with staff at CVUSD to discuss how things are going, if there's anything we need to change um, or clear up, and we discussed again this year, and we both agreed that there was nothing that um, we felt needed to be changed, uh, that this is beneficial for both organizations. Um, so in front of you, you have a updated amendment, which extends it for three years to June 30th of 2026. So if you are all in agreement to that, it would be approving um, the amendment number one for uh, CRPD and CVUSD um, to extend the joint use of facilities agreement for three years. And with that, I'm available for questions. Do we have any questions? No. All right. I will entertain a motion. Well, I, I do have a question. I'm sorry. To share. You, Did I miss you it? One chance and uh, go ahead. Uh, Rochelle, yeah. um, is there any other uh, mutual use exchange ideas that we haven't yet done that's on the horizon? Something new? Um, we keep in constant co uh, communication with them, and whenever folks bring us new ideas, we bring it to the table and have discussions. So there's some, you know, different little things that we're throwing out there, but nothing confirmed or anything at this point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I also have a question. Okay. So um, we have talked about are using their playgrounds when school wasn't in session. Would this cover that type of an agreement? Um, we do have access to some of their school playgrounds currently, and we are working to get potential additional access to certain amenities. Um, so that would be in and so part this, of that agreement. We wouldn't need to have another. I don't think so. for that. Not okay. unless we were building something on their property or they were building something on our property, adding a new amenity. Okay, thank you. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Director Nichols. Yes. Uh, move that the uh, follow staff recommendation to approve amendment number one between the park district and the school district as stated. Thank you very much. I'll second that. We have a second from Director Lang. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Item 9E, appointment to the Global Senior Center Commission. Is this? Thank you. That's me again. Oh, Thank hello, you, Mr. Huffer, and members of the board again. Um, so every year, uh, the Global Senior uh, Center Commission goes through um, some nominations. So they have the, it is an elected body with up to 15 members and an annually in compliance with their bylaws, the commission holds elections in March. And the commission terms are normally of three years and five-year terms come up for election each year. This year, an additional three seats were up for election due to the previous open seats remaining unfilled, kind of due to COVID and everything that was going on. Some seats didn't get filled. So they, um, in advance of the election, they had interviews of, of applicants. The applicants, review, or all the applicants were reviewed by the ad hoc committee, made up of the commissioners, and Director Lang sat on there also, and the commission president also observed the interviews. And then as a result of the interviews, the applicants review ad hoc committee made recommendations to the commission. And at the March 22nd meeting, the annual election was conducted and eight applicants were recommended to serve on the commission. Five seats are three-year terms, two seats are two-year terms, and one seat is a one-year term. All would be um, effective on July 1st of 2023. And in your packet, it does have the names of everybody and the number of years that they were nominated for. So with that, um, we're just asking that you guys um, approve the election. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Seek the ways for Director Cussworth. I just want to say how impressed I am in this community that we would have people actively putting in applications and all of these things that they're doing because they want to volunteer and not be paid anything just to be a part of this community and make the Global Center a great place for all seniors. It's absolutely, or all adults, it's very commendable that we live here. I just want to make that statement. And I would say that this commission is an amazing group of people that do a lot for the Global Center. There's so much that we would not, as staff, be able to do there without them. Director Nichols. Uh, thank you, Mr. I, I was just going to comment on the quality of the people. I was looking at their applications and some of the resumes and the experience. Uh, I mean, it's it's one thing to have volunteers, but when you have volunteers with a life history of volunteering and active involvement and just the uh, the passion that they have along with the capabilities that they have. I mean, employers would be paying a lot of money to have people like this. And here they are volunteering. That, that is fantastic. So we are truly blessed to have uh, such a group of people. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Anything else, Director Lang? Yes, both uh, Director Nichols and Cussworth touched on uh, a comment that I was going to make well, in the past, you know, I wasn't involved in the interviews. It was director Holt, but sitting there, not only reading their resumes and listening to them, watching them, their demeanor, their ex expression, their enthusiasm. There were a couple that were so enthused about this opportunity. It, and just echoes what you're saying, the quality of these individuals you know, is, is amazing. And to have them as part of our organization, our uh, commission is a real privilege. So uh, it was 
I would I really enjoyed the opportunity and I know that um, Director Holt previously uh, felt the same way. It's, we're just really blessed in this community. Any other comments or questions? Just to echo what's already been said, the volunteerism in, in our community is absolutely spectacular. And these, these folks who have been uh, recommended for, for the uh, Senior Commission uh, Council um, really uh, highlight uh, those those folks in our community. So um, I will entertain a motion on this recommendation. Director Nichols. Sure, make a motion. Yeah, just to uh, follow his staff's recommendation to approve the appointment of the individuals listed and the reappointment of the individuals listed in the recommendation from staff. Thank you very much. I second that. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Moving along to item 10, reports and announcements. Any board members have questions or comments about 10A through 10E? Director Lang. Yes, I'll make a comment on uh, 10A, our recreation highlights. And if you per turn to page 212, um, the youth outreach, we haven't seen a report for a few months. But um, I was looking at the count from when we started this uh, report, um, December, and then uh, both the middle school and high schools and so forth. And if you look at the number of increases in the total count from you know uh, December, uh, through February is the last one in this report, in our staff report. Um, you come up with a total of, of 618 uh, individuals at these schools, at the middle school and high school that have issues. And where would they have gone, you know, if we didn't have this youth outreach uh, program? Uh, you know, I think in some presentations in the past, we've heard you know, some of the issues that uh, these young men, people are having to deal with, especially these days. Um, I think, and I don't know how many other communities have such a program. I'm sure there are some, but uh, for us, CRPD, to provide this kind of opportunities for these young people to talk to somebody, work issues out and, and so forth, uh, I think is phenomenal. And I know that uh, some of the information that they get from the outreach team that we have, um, these young people will probably carry with them, you know, for the rest of their lives and it may easier to make the right decisions and so forth. So uh, Rochelle, thank the whole group. Uh, really appreciate them. That's it. Any other comments or questions on any of those items in 10? Mm -hmm. If not, department reports. Parks Division. I'll be brief. Um, just after all the rains, a lot of the fields being closed. Um, nearly every field is open now other than Triampho, just from site conditions and, and such. Um, we have some saturation still there from the rains. Um, so which is good and then our ground staff is starting our refurb schedule on some fields so the public and you may see some fencing and some work going on on some of the fields um, just you know normal kind of spring operations but delayed due to all the great rains but um, rains that kind of slowed down our programming um, we do have a finished playground of the eight playgrounds so suburbia playground opened a few weeks ago um and our, we currently have Sycamore and Banyan will start next week. So Sycamore is in construction and Banyan will start next week. Um, as well as we do have a new route for Canal Creek South. The exit road was realigned through the um, school district property. So staff um, between the district as well as the school district have been in coordination. Um, we've also been um, speaking with our community partners and permit holders in a meeting just to kind of let people know what's going on. Um, they've been having some issues on their property with, with illegal dumping and illegal parking and such. So they've decided to 
fence off their property and but we we still have an easement through their property and have access so we'll be doing some improvements on our our side of the property with some signage and some striping so you'll see some changes out there so just giving giving you all a heads up about that so with that i'm available for questions yes director lang yes um andrew when was the last time banyan uh, play playgrounds what you're talking about right Correct. Um, when was the last time that was refurbished? I believe that one's probably 15 to 20 plus years. I would have to look at our chart to see. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been a been a bit. Yeah, so it was, I, I knew this. It was not refurbished when the addition of Banyan Park was uh, put in. Correct. Because that was uh that less than that many years. So uh so about 15, 20 years, something like that. Yes. Okay. And that falls within the typical average. Uh, yeah, typically uh, community parks and pl and play fields just get more usage, so they might be in the fifteen to twenty range, and and neighborhood parks kind of range depending on use. But with it being close to the elementary school, then it just it gets used more, loved more, but then gets worn out more. So, yeah. thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Director yes. Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Moody, is there a page lane right of way between the two paved sections in the north and the south so as far as the history goes i don't know all the details of that why the decision was made to route and how the the sports fields are laid out i know that there is a right of way that extends a little bit further than what's currently at the north section of the paved page area that's adjacent to the school district developed portion of their property Okay, I just was curious if yeah, I, I would have to look through some maps and yeah, things. Yeah, I just was curious. You mentioned there was an easement, and I thought, well, there is a right of way over there. So, okay, all right, discussion for another time. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? If not, we'll move along to recollect <laughs> recreation. That's easy for you to say, Ms. Callis. Thank you, Chair Huff, for members of the board. Um, just a couple of things. As it was mentioned earlier, we actually had nine separate flashlight egg hunts this year, and that was because of weather and fields and staff at the very last minute got it together, had a great idea, a backup plan, marketing sent everything out, people helped us with marketing, and it was pretty crazy out there. So um, it was real interesting. So I'm sure the team will be looking at that and evaluating what they do for next time. Because as someone had said earlier, we got some feedback from people that they really liked being able to walk from their neighborhood into their neighborhood park. Um, la uh, this past Sunday was a celebration of Persian New Year. It was a very nice day in the park, thanks to Andrew's team. Um, the folks out at the at Canal Creek North did a great job and Matt did a great job um, supporting it also. So um, overall, we think maybe about 4,000 people uh, attended the park that day. Um, in your packet, you have two different things. One is our survey um, scores from our winter program. A great response, 10%. Again, I always say it, three, kind of 3% 3 is a yay. And so 10 is fantastic. Um, in the 80 to 90% on pretty much everything. And then you can see on the bottom right-hand corner, we are doing some marketing discussions. We, had, um, we have five scheduled, two have happened, unfortunately not nobody showed up to one of them with RSVPs. We had three or four RSVPs and the other one, we had one person sign up. So we're really hopeful these last three, we're going to get a handful of people. And we're just trying to talk to people about the program guide, how they use the website, um, basically how they find out information, search for programs and classes and stuff. And then the last thing in your packet is we are back with our museum um, events um, on a quarterly basis. And so you can see what our three local museums are doing, the information they provided to us, and we will continue to do this now that we are out of COVID. And with that, I'm available for questions. Yes, Director Cusworth. Well, I was extremely happy when I saw this flyer because I had sort of just sort of dropped on it. I used to call all the museums and tell them who to call and what to do. So who initiated this? I asked Charlene if we had if it was ready to do again since COVID was over. So, so she called all the museums and got all the information. Oh, yes, wow. she did it all. She, she picked, did it all. I well, said, "What's great?" And she said, "Done." Mm -hmm. 
I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And so, um, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think our museums are doing well. So thanks. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Just one. Oh, yes. Um, did you want the board members to go to this uh, program guide and online registration focus group? If the board members have comments or things that we should know, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just curious. Was you like, don't have to. You can also call us and chat with us. Oh, okay. But I, yes, if, if you know friends, people on that you want to push stuff out to, we would love we would love people who sign up for classes to help us understand it, what's yeah. working and not working for. You might well, it might be difficult too because these are both weeks of spring break. So next week is spring break for Caneo Valley Unified School District. So you might get less attendance for those two meetings. So you might want to, if you want, if you don't get a very good attendance this week, add one more. Cause like I would come to those two, but I'm out of town for spring break. So, and then I know Agora was this week. So I don't know if that affected it. Thank you. Any other comments? Just one quick comment, Rochelle. Seems like, I, I know the calendar is def, difficult to figure out, but seems like every time schedule the McCray Ranch Cowboy Cookout. It's always at the tail end of the CARPD conference, which makes it a little bit difficult. So just for future reference, if it was possible to. I think it's their foundation that gives us the dates. I know. <laughs> you know anybody over there you could talk to? Yeah. You <laughs> lasso me and wrap me up and mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, moving along to Ms. Smith. I have no report this evening, but I'm available for questions. Do we have any questions from Melissa? Yes, Director Lang. Just a positive comment on the selection of Moss Levy and Hartsman, something like that. Um, especially for the MRCA, because it's a, such an unusual animal to have uh, a, an organization that's been with us before. We don't have to go through that learning curve and so forth. And they understand the relationship between CRPD and MRCA. I think that's really in our to our advantage, and I'm glad to see that uh, they're a good good organization. Thank you. Any other comments? No. In that case, we'll move along to directors' reports and follow up reports on meetings, conferences attended. How about general manager. manager? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Make him feel bad. Uh, I, I'm so embarrassed. I'll, I'll go. I'll go really quick. Thank you, Chair Huffer, members of the board. This is uh, every two years we do, you know, anti-harassment training. So all the staff are going to be doing it. And just as a reminder, there's a few board members that it's their time as well. So we'll be sending you an email. And I looked, and my email went into my um, like my filter folder. So if you don't get an email, um look for something because we're going to send you the email for the online link um just as a heads up the page lane uh combs road neighborhood meeting that's coming up next week so um mr sellers and andrew and i are going to be out just chatting with the neighbors about the idea and how we how we can work that out and work through that issue so that's coming up um it two 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 weeks and one day 15 days from now we're doing the leadership Pineo program with the chamber so it's it's crpd day and normally they have like high teens maybe low 20s they they have 31 people coming so we have a you know big old bus and we're going to be doing that tour and you are invited because you've never done that um and if another board member wants to come you're invited too but um Marissa was asking to see some, yeah, I was like, well, why don't you just join the chambers tour? So we'll be doing that tour and taking people on a bus talking about CRPD. Um, finally, President Nichols um, of CARPD, um, his slate of board officers are set. Um, he's the president and there's a, a slate and at the general meeting, uh, the annual meeting in coming up at the conference, um, there's a proposed slate, but the letter goes on to explain that there still are, you know, the opportunity for boards to put up other members. And for some reason, I kind of knew this. So I called just to verify. And theoretically, there could be two board members from the same district serving on that. that that's their limit. 
So I'll send you guys this email if somebody else wanted to serve on the board. But again, the president's here and the president has a slate. So I, you know, kind of leave it to Doug to guide guide us on that. But I feel obligated to let you know if you were interested, there's an opportunity that I feel like I need to pass along. But again, President President Nichols has a slate already. Just, so. just for clarification, it's still president-elect until president after elect. the board meeting. Oh, okay. All right. The, so the so get there to vote. The so conference. Get there to vote at the conference. Um, and then we do have need for a closed session, but otherwise I'm available for comments or questions. Yes, Director Pressworth. So um, I don't think I know what the conflict is at Page Lane and Coombs. Is that something you can say what the problem is? Yeah, it's not a conflict. It's just that the the property, the improvements versus where the property line is. Oh, okay. road, we're just yeah, going to try to sort that out. That. Yeah, no, it's a good meeting. It's a good, yeah, like, how to solve a problem meeting. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Now? Now. Now. Go okay. for it, Chair. <laughs> I think I started this side last time, so I'm going to start with Director Lang. Okay, I'll try to make this brief. Uh, had a Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy meeting, uh, second special MRCA meeting, and I, uh, along with practically everybody from our board, attended the Canal Valley Unified School District uh, State of the District uh, event. And... Uh, uh, I can't remember ever having a state of the school district meeting at the Hyatt before. I know it's been at CLU and so forth. So um, I thought it was a good event. Mm -hmm. Director Bess. Uh, yes, I just remembered some I did and didn't put on my sheet, but I was also at the state of the schools, the community conference, Mardi Gras ball, right? We're saying on. Um, Oh, for the training for the harassment, is that the training I just, okay, so I did that training and I did the other the ethics training too, so I'm good on those, good to know. And then uh, the two board member, the two, I can't remember the things that I was definitely doing. So yeah, state of schools, Mardi Gras ball, and there was one other one, but I don't know, I need my sheet, sorry, I ran out. Yes, Dr. Cusworth. So the main thing I did is I went to the, um, CPRS conference, I'm still getting a bit confused of all of the um, different organizations that we're members of. They all have C's, P's, R, S's, or A's. <laughs> and all they do is rearrange them all. Yeah, true. And so, so this one I went to, and I have to say, um, I've only been to two other um, uh, conferences that have to do with CRPD. Um, but I've been to a lot of education conferences, and I think this is one of the best, if not the best, I've ever gone to, mainly because I went to a field trip uh, where they took us in a bus around to all of these different areas in San Diego. So you got to really see a lot of what their accomplishments have been, struggles have been, uh, things that they're working on. And it was very much things that we are thinking about also, like urban parks or revenues from events, or how to deal with properties that uh, were given to you by a developer and it's just a hill. Um, like, what are you gonna do with it? So it was very pertinent. And in fact, uh, Harvey and I went back to some of the parks. This morning we went back and did a hiking trail on one of the parks on our way back because we didn't have time to do it before we came. It was excellent, Sandy Leo Lagoon Res uh, reserve if you're ever going down to san diego stop there and go hike up their slot canyon it was really fun and so i enjoyed it the keynotes were good and i was also glad i could talk with mike mcadam you know a lot of times i don't have a chance to just talk with staff and i didn't hook up with Devin at all but did you all know that he was the president of the senior section of cprs he is the president that was being elected. Well, you guys might have. Did you know that? I Somehow I learned about that, yes. I didn't know that. And I go to him and I said, why are you sitting here at this desk? Well, I'm going to be elected to be the president of this. And I was like, whoa. You know, it's just that our staff is involved in a lot of other things in the state that we may not be, you know, aware of. 
And I was very impressed and was glad that I had a chance to talk to him. And just real quickly, I want to salute my husband who drove me down there and back, had spent quite a bit of time in a hotel room, um, hiked with me and even said, oh, we get to go on a bus ride to different parks and listen to lectures. That sounds like fun. I married the right man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll make sure that's in the minutes. <laughs> Director Nichols. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, the second half of March was a little slower than my first half. So aside from the school uh, foundation luncheon, that was it until I went to a, went on a hike yesterday. I just needed to go see some wildflowers in the Wildwood Mesa, mm -hmm. took a bunch of pictures. It was uh, great to get out there. Um, I, I thought I must have been there on a Saturday because the parking lot was full. Mm -hmm. Hikers were everywhere. People who had their guides out there. Where's the waterfall out? I think most of the people there were not from the city of Thousand Oaks, yeah. uh, but the place was just buzzing with people everywhere. I saw puddles that I'd never seen puddles before. <coughs> I saw streams where I'd never seen stream channels before. Uh, the water was just flowing everywhere. And the, actually three of the rangers were out there trying to keep after it. They said, stopped and talked to them on the, uh, on the way in their way in my way out and they were saying that that their to-do list is so long that they're just trying to find what can they get to and where is it going to affect the most people today it is just just uh, off the charts with the things they have to do so they have their hands full and kudos for the great crew that we have to be able to keep those facilities open but it was absolutely beautiful out there um I, I hadn't seen so much green grass on the Mesa for years. So it was fantastic. So the wildflowers were in the favor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't call it a super bloom that you see from afar, but once you get out there and you're looking into it, they are everywhere. Yeah. All right. Um, just briefly, um, the, the one meeting you forgot about was the revenue committee meeting. At you were there with me. Oh, was it? Oh. I was like, I wasn't out there. Wait a second. I know I was there with somebody. Don't make me up. All right. Um, so we had the Revenue Committee. Um, I went to see Camp Courage. That was so cute. I mean, you know, you, you see the, the young artist ensemble and, and the teenagers are great actors and actresses, but these are little elementary school kids and they just, they did a spectacular job. It was really a fun play. Um, it wasn't really park district related, but I did go to the Bowls of Hope over at Cal Lutheran. Uh, we did the state of the schools, uh, managed to hit three of the, how many flashlight sites were there? Nine. So I got three out of the nine, went to Oak Brook, Wildwood, and, and uh, Northwood, North, North, Northwood. Um, managed to find uh, Rochelle working her, working her tail off helping at Wildwood because they they expected, you know, a few kids at each of these parks. There were dozens and dozens of kids, and they ran out of gifts and a lot more people than they had really expected. So um, that was fun. The um, uh, George and I were at the uh, VCSD, VCSDA meeting uh, Tuesday. Tuesday night and uh, heard a good presentation from the um, general manager at the Cayagos. <clears throat> and um, it's it's probably going to be at least nominated for a um, short in the next Academy Awards, but I did my video recording for the school district in there. <laughs> little little 30 second video that they're supposed to do it all the concert things. So anyway, that's all I was up to. Uh, Chair Huffman, yeah, can I make a real quick short one? Okay. Based on the comments, uh, Director Nichols and the wildflowers and so forth. I think you've been made aware of the uh, hay wagon ride out at the equestrian center, community equestrian center. And uh, I do have reservations and I think Director Nichols and uh, so if you haven't had the opportunity or don't have reservations, I would, and you're available, I would suggest you see if you have any uh, opportunity, they still have any openings. That's uh, the last weekend of the month, the 27th, 8th, or something like that. Okay. Uh, moving along, item 12, request for status reports and items for subsequent agendas. Does anyone have anything? 
No. Items from the public. Do we have any public? No, no public. You must be private then if you're not public. So, okay. Um, we do have need apparently for an executive closed session. Mr. General Manager. Yes, thank you, Chair Hubbard, members of the board. We have need for a closed session conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code section 54957.6. District representatives Friedel, Smith, and our attorney Adriana Guzman relative to labor negotiations with Service Employees International Union, the represent employees regarding salary schedules and fringe benefits. Um, no announcement is expected. Thank you. In that case, we will adjourn this evening's meeting. I don't mind, Patrino, about my.